Sorry to break this to you, but you might just be a terrorist. I'm Addison Tweedy, and this is Tweedy's Take. Just recently, I was browsing on Reddit, and I came across an article that was posted to the forums. It stated how the left creates fake studies to fabricate right-wing terrorism. Now, intrigued by the claim that there are false studies being done to fabricate right-wing terrorism, I went ahead and clicked on the article and read through it. The author had looked at a study done by CSIS, or the Center for Strategic and International Studies. CSIS is basically a big think tank, and they claim to be nonpartisan. On each of the reviews, they claim to have a Republican and a Democrat who goes through the different processes as they work through different theories and studies. But on this particular study, I was interested to see why it was so biased against right-wing ideologies. Of course, anyone can claim that they're not biased and they're just looking for facts, but people are biased in nature. Of course, anyone can say that they don't have a bias, but that will never be true. There will always be bias among people, and there will always be people who will try to fit the data into their view of the world. Now, I'm not making an assumption that these people are just trying to skew the data, but I do want to look at what they included in their statistics. So let's look into the study. The brief is titled, The Escalating Terrorism Problem in the United States. I'll link to it in the description below. Now, this study is particularly focused on terrorism in the U.S. and really makes a case for the rise of right-wing terrorism and states that that is the biggest issue that the U.S. is facing today. Let's go over what they include in their definitions of terrorism. It states, this analysis focuses on terrorism, the deliberate use or threat of violence by non-state actors in order to achieve political goals and create a broad psychological impact. Violence and the threat of violence are important components of terrorism. Overall, this analysis divides terrorism into four broad categories, right-wing, left-wing, religious, and ethno-nationalist. So first they talked about threat of violence and violence itself included in acts of terrorism. It also included the four different categories that they're breaking it apart into. That was right-wing, left-wing, religious, and ethno-nationalist. It then goes into the definitions of those four categories, and I wanted to address those here. For right-wing terrorism, this includes those whose goals may include racial or ethnic supremacy, opposition to government authority, anger at women, including from the incel movement, and outrage against certain policies such as abortion. This seems like a very, very broad category, and I wanted to emphasize it's talking about anger itself at women. It's talking about outrage against policies such as abortion. So it's coding the threat of violence as an act of terrorism, and within it, it's including outrage, anger, and other emotions that can tend towards violence, but it doesn't mean that they have to end in an act of violence itself. Now, I was curious as to what exactly they were including in their data set when I saw these broad terms. So I went into their methodology and within it, it had this statement. We coded threats of violence as attacks rather than plots, even if the threat turned out to be a hoax. So if there is a fake threat somewhere, they included these hoaxes under the plotted attacks. They gave their reasoning and said hoaxes still caused public fear and required a law enforcement response. Now, even more concerning is what they admit to in the following paragraph. It states that multiple attacks were coded as one incident if they were committed as part of one coordinated plan by the same actors simultaneously or in rapid succession. They give the example of the September 11th attacks and say the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and how they were coded together because it matched their definition of one attack. So to me, this is very concerning because everything that they're doing is defining things in broad terms. They're not really narrowing down on anything in particular. The act of terrorism and what is counted as an attack could simply be someone's opinion at this point. So to me, this is concerning because they're defining everything in broad terms. They're not narrowing into anything in particular. A terrorist attack, for all they're concerned about, can be counted even if it's fake, even if it's just the intent and it's just voiced. They leave this category so broad that they can include basically anything in it. In particular, one of the statistics I would like to know when looking at these so-called terrorist attacks is how many of those were under the broad umbrella of hate crimes. From what I can gather, that's the statistic that they're actually using here. Now, another thing that I think we should look at is the fact that they put incels under terrorists. Now, if you don't know what an incel is, it's someone who is involuntarily celibate. They define themselves as unable to have a romantic relationship despite having the desire to have one. Many of these men are misogynistic, they have a sense of entitlement to sex, they're self-loathing, 
and they have a lot of self-pity. To a lot of people, these are undesirable traits. But this study goes so far as to even call them terrorists. So to bring it all together, the category of right-wing terrorism basically includes anyone who is opposed to the left, who are against policies such as abortion, and then it throws incels into this right-wing narrative as well. Tweety from the future, I took a break, recorded the footage, and realized that I didn't address this issue. Within the study itself, it says that they are not addressing the Republican Party or Democratic Party. That's not how they want things to be split. However, when they say right wing and left wing, they're basically implying that, especially when right wing terrorism attacks include anti-abortion. That's more on the Republican side. And then on the Democratic side, you have people who are pursuing environmental or animal rights issues. This isn't a mistake or something that they looked over. I believe that in some ways this study was made so that if someone was referencing it outside of the context, no one would know that you're not talking about Republicans and Democrats. If you came up to me and told me that there was a rise in right-wing terrorism, I would assume that you're talking about terrorism coming from the Republican side, and then vice versa. That's because in the United States, that's how the party system has played out. You have Democrats on the left, and Republicans on the right. So to state in the study that they are not referencing the Democratic or Republican Party, but then to use terms that are almost equal to them in the US, that seems very disingenuous to me. That's all I wanted to add here. So we see that the definition for right-wing terrorism is very broad in its scope. But what do they say about other forms of terrorism? Under left-wing terrorism, they state, this involves the use or threat of violence by subnational or non-state entities that oppose capitalism, imperialism, and colonialism, pursue environmental or animal rights issues, espouse pro-communist or pro-socialist beliefs, or support a decentralized social and political system such as anarchism. So under left wing, they also seem to have a broader scope. They have this umbrella term for terrorism in that sphere. However, I don't think that they're comparing apples to apples here. If you're going to include anti-abortion under an act of terrorism, then I'm going to include the act of abortion under left-wing terrorism. If you're going to include incels, then I'm going to include femcels in the left-wing ideologies. If you're going to include misogyny, then you should also include misandry under the left. These are direct opposites to each other, and I think it's unfair to keep those out of the statistics. For the left, they're really not focusing on groups that would act out of hate. They're really not giving a fair representation. Now there's a lot more to these statistics, and obviously I didn't include the two other categories that were included in their analysis, but my purpose in addressing these specific categories of left-wing and right-wing was showing the difference in how these categories were judged. Statistics, when they're so constrained by subtle nuances in their definitions, can speak for any side and tell any story. In this case, if you're against abortion and you speak out against it, you may just find yourself in a study included in the statistics for terrorism. I personally think that we need to go back to the original definition of terrorism and stick to that. Terrorism, when properly defined, is the unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population, or any segment thereof in furtherance of political or social objectives. I think this is the definition that we should stand by. So feel free to read up on the study. I've included it in the description below. And also I have linked to the article that inspired this conversation. What are your thoughts on this? Are people defining things too far? Where do we stop? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. This has been Tweety's Take, and until next time, yabasia.